play it. So, um, Al, thank you so much for joining us here from Toy Network and looking at, I guess, asking you a bit about your um, project and why you chose Outlaw and, and what's next for you and, and partnerships uh, uh, and everything. And then looking at the upcoming Outlaw Adventures base, uh, base camp. If you could, first of all, just introduce yourself and say, what is Koi? So the Koi network is designed to be a single on-ramp to all of decentralization. Uh, I spent several years teaching people about blockchain and cryptocurrency. And one of the biggest problems is that most people actually don't really want to learn about blockchain or the underlying technology. So what we're trying to do is to obfuscate all of the complexities so that people can build both decentralized applications and actually you know, use those decentralized applications without having to learn too many new concepts or you know, have to relearn their entire software languages that they know. Right, yeah, thank you. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm a part of a DeFi startup myself and know that partnerships and meeting the right people and being on the right protocols and so forth is, is the single most important thing by a, a long way. What made you choose Outlier? What was the selection process? Uh, so Outlier actually sort of found us. Uh, we were in contact with another Outlier project that had just gone through the program. And right. they suggested that we, you know, we might want to reach out and just see if we could get some feedback. Um, so Scott from OB uh, took mm -hmm. a call with me kind of out of the blue. Uh, Scott runs the Basecamp Accelerator. Scott Colin. Yeah, Scott Colin. Right. Um, so he took a call with me sort of out of the blue and he gave us like, you know, basically a list of suggestions of things that we might want to consider doing. And every single thing on the list was amazing. And right. so we immediately wanted to get Outlier to invest in our project and kind of help us along. Um, and then, you know, the, the process of getting into Basecamp is a, it's a several interview process. So it's not uh, too hard, to be honest. Um, if you have a good idea and you have a good product or, you, you know, if you have your team together, then they're pretty open minded about investing mm -hmm. in people. Um, and then they gave us our first check uh, that came into Koi, actually. So we had like five people working on this before uh, Outlier invested in us. And then right. they basically got us to the point where we actually were able to hire a full time team and start expanding and really uh, had pretty much introduced us to all of our investors up until March of last year. Nice. I mean, and looking at it now, you're pretty massive. You've got a, a big team. When when was that, that process and how long did that all take? Uh, so it's been about, I think, 13 months since we met Outlier Ventures. Um, and we've grown from three to 30 people. Um, and in the same time, our uh, our technology stack has now, now includes five products and I think about eight standards. Um, and so we've implemented all of this in about 13 months, just thanks to the, uh, the yeah. access to advisors and mentors throughout our. All right, that's just super, super and impressive. Can you share some of the ideas that Scott gave you? Are you, are you able to share what some of those are or were? Well, so we were thinking uh, when we first came into this, we kind of wanted to build our own thing. Uh, we had the mm -hmm. intentions of eventually building our own blockchain and a number of other things. Um, and one of the things that I think Outlier really helped us with was to identify a uh, feature creep where we didn't want to try and build out too much uh, and to focus on things that would allow us to build good tokenomics mm -hmm. and then to use the good tokenomics to build out the other stuff over time. Um, and so it was sort of a matter of, uh, you know, having a process and being able to see what other people have done before and what's worked and what's difficult. Um, the other thing that was just an enormous help from them was uh, Scott suggested to be looking to Arweave, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, Arweave is a permanent storage medium. So instead of Filecoin, where you pay to store things temporarily, and then if you stop paying, they get deleted, or IPFS, where you have to pin it on your own device in order for it to actually be used, uh, be available to other people, the Arweave network is uh, basically a high throughput, high latency storage medium where you can upload almost anything for a really inexpensive fee, and it gets stored on the network uh, basically forever, uh, for all intents and purposes. So what you essentially do is you prepay for storage. And then the interest on that storage endowment pays off all the storage costs over time. And since storage costs are decreasing over time, that actually basically goes to uh, an infinity, if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of, uh, I guess, you know, grade 10 calculus again. But Yeah, sure. No, that, that's great. And I mean, how have you found working with, with the mentors? I mean, having been uh, on, uh, on various different uh, accelerators and, and incubators you know, with, with various startups, some of some can tend to be rather more time consuming. Um, and obviously with, with Outlier, as, as my understanding is, and I'm sort of, well, disclaimer perhaps is an advisor to some of the base camps, um, but it, it seems to be pretty much you can pick and choose who you speak to at any time. Has that been your experience and what kind of people have you been meeting 
on it? The first thing I would say is um, outside of like the mentor pool, who are sort of like me the mentors are a lot of people who are associated with Outlier and they'll come in and kind of you, you pitch them through the first like month or so. You pitch probably 10 people a day and get feedback on your product and what you're working on. Um, but the other side of it that's really amazing with Outlier that I've never seen from another VC firm, with the exception of perhaps Finbushi, um, is that Outlier's entire team helped us build this product. So uh, everyone from Scott to Charlotte, uh, Charlotte was the, the head of kind of media communications for a while. Um, and then Stefan, who's the managing partner, uh, has helped us basically build most of our tokenomics and most of our financing. Um, and even uh, Jamie, the, the lead guy there, is still, uh, he still answers my messages. Just about every time that I send him a message, he responds almost immediately. Um, they're very, very helpful people. They really care about making this stuff easier for the founders. I think they've um, a lot of them have been through the founding process themselves, so they realize how yeah. difficult it is, uh, which makes a gigantic difference. Yeah. And, and they were actively involved in, in your project, like helping design the tokenomics and everything. Yeah, they gave us feedback uh, on a weekly basis. We still have a running call with them every Wednesday morning where we go through everything we're working on and they give us feedback. They connect us with more people and we kind of keep the ball moving. Amazing. Amazing. And, and what's next for you guys at, at Koi? Is it more partnerships? Is it building more protocols? What's, what's the plan? So the big thing we're doing now, we are a cross-chain network. So the, the last probably 13 months or so has been setting up the fundamentals. We've got our own node now. We have our own standard for uh, tasks, which is our version of contracts. And we've been able to basically build out an entirely new standard for NFTs now. Um, so what we're trying to do now is to take this layer N protocol we've created with Koi and connect it to everything. Because what it allows you to do then is you can deploy a DAP that uses each network for what it's meant for. So if you have something that needs to be stored permanently, you put that on our roof. If you need something temporarily stored, we'll put that on Filecoin or IPFS. Um, and if you need something that's going to be like a high throughput computation environment, maybe you put that on Polygon. Um, so there's a lot of these different options out there. And we're basically going through now and adding the ramps so that you can use the same standard on all of those networks. Um, so in the roadmap right now, we have Polygon, Avalanche, Filecoin, a few other integrations. Um, at the moment, the network supports Ethereum and Arweave. Uh, so with the Finny wallet right now, you can actually mint an NFT by dragging and dropping a file into Finny. In under a minute, it'll create an NFT for about a penny, um, at which point you can click one button and move it over into OpenSea and start selling. Um, yeah. But if you don't want to sell it, you can also mine attention rewards on it by showing it to your friends. Uh, so we have a lot of people right now uh, with our Atomic Zombie collection. We've shown them to about like 7,000 people. And the thing about these zombies is that when you show them to somebody else, they actually change. And so every day, each of these zombies is counting the amount of attention it's receiving. And if it gets five, uh, five people looking at it at the same time, you know, it gets a little squeamish and it'll put on a COVID mask because it doesn't want to get infected, right? Yeah. Um, and if it gets up to 10, then its skin will change color. Uh, if it gets up to 100, it gets a podcast mic. Uh, I think at 50, you get a gas mask. And today is like kind of a surprise for everybody with Guy Fox Day, we actually put autonomous, uh, anonymous masks, I should say, on all of them. So we put Guy Fox masks on the entire zombie. Right. It's a surprise for everybody, you know, happy Guy Fox Day. Um, yeah. that, that's, I mean, that, that's super cool. And I know obviously what, what you're saying, you're trying to make the, your, your platform as accessible as, as possible. What kind of people have you seen getting involved in, in your NFTs? Is it sort of diehard traditional crypto users or is it people coming from other avenues? So one of the things about Koi is that you can onboard to Koi with no crypto. So you don't need to go to an exchange and buy crypto yeah. to get into the network. So we've seen a lot of people who probably wouldn't have been able to engage with NFTs otherwise who come to Koi. Because and buying crypto is still way too complicated for like 90%. Yeah, exactly. But So the idea of this attention rewards thing is that for an end user, um, if you bring a bunch of attention to our network, we will give you a certain amount of Koi tokens, which you can then use to buy things from us. So. Right. And then set up your DID and you can use it to use our bridge. And the bridge also takes Koi tokens. Um, and so basically we've created a, a network based on the currency of attention, uh, which allows us to onboard people very, very quickly. Uh, so in the last three months or so, we've onboarded about 15,000 fake users. Yeah, that's super cool. And just going back to the accelerator question, have you looked at any of us? Have you been part of any of us? Are you looking at joining any of us sort of accelerators or, or partnership programs or anything like that? Yeah, so we've actually been through uh, three accelerators this year. So Sanctor Turbo uh, is another one. So Sanctor Turbo is a bunch of the guys from Crypto Briefing and Altcoin News. Mm -hmm. um, and they were at an enormous help. They're kind of like a later stage accelerator. So they took us through the, uh, I would call Outlier is more like an incubator and Sanctor is right. more like an accelerator. So yeah. Sanctor connected us with all of the PR agencies uh, that kind of run most of crypto. They've introduced us to a lot of the news agencies and the people that actually are uh, talking about this stuff and have the ability to put a spotlight on us. 
Um, the other group that's actually been really helpful is called J Combinator. So J Combinator is a group through uh, the Arweave uh, kind of ecosystem that has coordinated a lot of the resources on that side of things. Um, and it's a little bit of a smaller crowd, but if anybody is looking for accelerators, we can probably introduce you to them. Yeah, no, it's super cool. And just last last question on that: what what aspects of of the um, the, the base camp or of any other accelerators have been the most useful? If anyone hasn't been through an accelerator yet, I mean, I meet a, a whole load of startups who are thinking, is it worth it? Is it worth joining it? Is it just a waste of time? Because some of them do just make you join call after call after call after call, and then you end up just spending your time traveling places or, or, or listening to a load of Zooms and not being able to focus on the program. And obviously a lot uh, uh, others are, are much more hands-on and, and really helpful. What, what sort of a couple elements would you say are the most useful? So the thing to look out for is finding mentors that are actually going to understand what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And so with, with Koi, initially we had a really hard time explaining it because we were focused on the technical aspects, or I was focused on the technical aspects more so because I'm a very technical person. I come from a, a robotics background. So that's the kind of stuff that I think is impressive. Um, and so we spent a lot of time on calls with people where we weren't communicating to them properly. Um, and so I would say that every single call in crypto is valuable because crypto is such a small community that having those relationships allows you to uh, not only have access to things that you wouldn't have access to, but it also creates spokespeople for your product. Um, and every person that you can explain it to is another spokesperson. Um, and so what we ran into initially, I think, was that we were uh, talking way over people's heads. And so a lot of the calls didn't feel super productive for the first week or so. And then we had yeah. to tone it down. And then you learn. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I've, I've seen that replicated across pretty much every crypto startup that there is and, and again it's, it's led by super techie people who, who don't understand that it's got to be explained to PR people or lawyers or end users or, or, or whatever that may be right so what I would say I guess is that uh, all of those phone calls are incredibly useful because practicing saying it out loud is often the best way to figure out how to actually say it uh, good point good point and uh, what's next for you guys um, well the next thing that we're doing right now is launching our DID product. Uh, so as we launched our bridging technologies, we've got an open source bridge. Um, and so when we launched our bridging technologies, uh, the bridge required us to have keys on our weave and Ethereum. Now I'm getting very technical again. Um, but what this essentially means is that if you have, if you want to have a footprint on all these different blockchain networks, you have to have an ID that works on all of them. Um, and so we've recently developed a cross-chain DID standard, which we'll be releasing fairly soon. I think there's a wait list for that right now. No, amazing. Hey, no, Al, thank you so much for joining us. Really glad that you joined the, the base camp with, uh, incubated with, with Outlier Ventures and that you're still in contact um, with them and, and great to meet you and have me. Thank you. Sure, thanks a lot. <laughs>